Welcome back to the class. In this lecture, we will describe supervised machine learning. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the process of training, testing, and validation of a supervised machine learning model, as well as be able to select the appropriate type of data for model training. So as a quick review, there are uh, two different ways of machine learning that we can think about. One called classification. Now with the classification uh, model, the model is going to be returning a discrete value. So in the case of our iris data set, it will give you one of three species. In other classification problems, such as a binary classification problem, you will get a true or false. This differs from regression, where you will get a numerical value. So you could think of a regression problem as, say, predicting a stock price. This module will focus on classification. Uh, regression will be covered in a different module. There is another delineation between machine learning approaches, and that is feature-based versus featureless. Now, with feature-based, the model is taking specific measurements derived from the data. So, in our iris data set, the features are the length and width of the petals and sepals of the flowers. These are not uh, derived directly from the images, but you have this extra measurement. Now, in a featureless approach, perhaps the most popular today being deep learning, the model would work directly on the data. So in this case, the model would just take the direct images of the flowers and then do reasoning on those. For this module, we will focus on feature-based, and again, feature-less and deep learning will be covered in a different module. So the other uh, key modifier of what we're talking about today is supervised learning. Now, with supervised learning, you have the use of what's called training data. And you have training data where you previously have all the measurements, all the features. And for each of those sets of measurements, you know what the result is. And a what is called a training algorithm takes that training data and produces a model. And so that step is different from what's called inference. Inference is where you use the model to actually make the decision. You have this other step where the algorithm trains the model. Now finally, there's another aspect of supervised learning is the use of a second data set, often called a test set, to evaluate the performance of the model. And we have for that data set also what's called ground truth, where we actually know what the right answer is. So let's give you a little intuition on how a supervised model is created. So first, we have training data. And this is data where we have both the measurements, the features, as well as the result, the ground truth. So taking this training data, we put it through an algorithm called a training algorithm. And this is only used to create a model. And the model that results is called a supervised model. Throughout the course of this particular module, we will be looking at decision trees. And here is a picture of a decision tree for our iris flower data set. This is the result of a training algorithm. Now, once we have that model, that model is what gets used operationally. So as you see new data, and in this case, you know, say a new flower that all you have is the measurements of, you want to be able to infer what species of iris it is. And that's where you use the model to do that step. Now, one thing that's notable here is typically doing the inference using the model is much faster than actually training the model. Oftentimes, training the model, that algorithm will take a long period of time. And when you look at some of the state-of-the-art machine learning approaches, and what some of the major tech companies are doing, some of those models are actually extremely time-consuming and expensive to create, requiring a lot of computational power, 
and a lot of electricity. Well, we won't do anything like that in this course, but you will still notice that it will take a bit longer to actually train the model than use it for inference. Okay, so historical data. So as you saw in the last slide, having a supervised model is, it's very important to have data where you already know what the right answer is. And for our IRIS data set, here's an example of that. So we have four columns of measurements, and then we have a column called class, which is simply a numeric code for the species of iris for that given row. So let's talk about this in some machine learning terms. So a sample. A sample is just each row in the historical data. So each iris that we have previously gotten these measurements and identified what type of species it is, that is a sample. The features, these are the measurements that are associated with each sample, so the columns. So here we have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Those are the features. And so you could see that right there. And finally, the target class label. And this is what the right answer is. And that is this last column we have simply labeled as class. And this is the categorization of each sample. And this is ultimately what we want the machine learning model to be able to infer on its own. So let's talk a bit about the model. There are some key aspects of the model itself that we need to be aware of. The first is the structure of the model. And this is sort of like what the model, quote unquote, looks like. Now, a decision tree has a very distinct uh, set of characteristics. Uh, in a later lecture, we'll uh, go through what those precisely are. But you see right away that a decision tree, you know, it has a tree-like structure. Um, it has these bifurcated splits at each of the nodes. When it gets to a leaf node, it's drawing a conclusion. And so understanding the model structure, this is normally dictated by the type of machine learning algorithm that you're using, is really important, especially when deciding for a given problem what kind of machine learning approach I should use. Now, associated with the model are what are called parameters. So here, the parameters are at each split of this decision tree, it's looking at a different measurement. And what I've circled are x3, it's looking at the third measurement being less than or equal to 0.8. X2 is looking at the second measurement being less than or equal to 4.95. So that, you know, 0.8 and that 4.95, that comes from the training process. And that, those are parameters that are being learned from the historical data. So you don't really have to worry about those parameters yourself as a designer. You just need to be aware that that is what's going to be filled in during the training process. Now, the next thing is called hyperparameters, which sounds quite exciting. These are numeric values associated with the model structure or the learning algorithm. They differ from parameters in that these are things that now you can tune. And so, uh, for example, in this um, decision tree model, the height of the decision tree is a common hyperparameter. You can, if you wanted to, specify decision trees that have a much shorter height, maybe only a height of two. In this case, we set it as three. Also with the decision tree, you could limit the number of nodes in the tree that you're allowed to have. And you would want to do these for a number of reasons. You would maybe want to be able to constrain the size of the model be for memory reasons, or maybe that you want to make sure that the model doesn't, uh, what we say, overfit the data, where it's too specific for your training data. And we'll talk more about overfitting uh, later on. The second type of hyperparameter deals with the algorithm itself, the algorithm for training, that is. 
And so can we tune the training process either based on the computational limitations that we have or based on things that might change the way the model uh, looks or behaves? So, all right, we have a basic understanding of models, of data. Now I have this historical data, and we talked about training and testing, and then you might have seen this other thing called validation mentioned in the lesson objectives. How do we arrange that data in a way to support our efforts? Well, there's going to be uh, three categories. You have one is training data. And training data is the data that's essentially used to set those model parameters by the training algorithm. So the training algorithm is trying to fit a model to the training data. And that's solely what it's used for. The next group of data is called validation data. And this is to be used by the designer of uh, you know, the machine learning method to determine the best hyperparameters for your specific use case. You want to have this be separate from the training data, but still coming from roughly the same distribution. Now finally is testing. So once I have the model and I'm comfortable with what the hyperparameters are, I then want to test uh, the model to understand its performance. And that's the last step you want to do before actually deploying the model. So this concludes our lecture on the basics of supervised learning. Uh, we, looked at, we looked at how models can be trained, how to divide up data sets between training, testing, and validation, and discuss some key terminology around supervised machine learning. Stay tuned and we'll explore more.